it's a once in a lifetime event for me. Big day for sports fans in the West. Some uh, hyped up over the buildup of the NCAA final four games in Arizona, while others very sad to learn this will be the final A season in the city of Oakland. I think it's devastating, but it at least we have clarity and at least now we can look at what the future is going to hold. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to West Coast Wrap. I'm Frank Malicote. Ace fans know tonight their team has been here nearly 50 years in Oakland. Well, that's coming to an end. Let's take you out for a live look at the Oakland Coliseum tonight. The team announced this morning it will leave the location and set up a temporary home at AAA Sacramento before making a big move down to Las Vegas. KTVU's Joey Horton has details on what's taking the team to Sacramento for the next three years. The owners of both the Oakland A's and the Sacramento Kings coming together Thursday morning in West Sacramento for a major announcement. The A's are moving to Sac. Momentous day for our 123-year-old franchise. The major league team is going to a minor league stadium. The A's are moving to Sutter Health Park in West Sacramento, current home of the River Cats, with its majority owner, the Sacramento Kings. You're going to see Aaron Judge hitting home runs out there. This is what an incredible day. This is epic. It's historic. The deal secures a home base for the athletics for three seasons from 2025 to 2027. There's also an option for a fourth season in 2028. We're excited to be here for the next three years playing in this uh, beautiful ballpark. The announcement comes after the city of Oakland's previous offer of a five-year, $97 million lease failed. The city then offered a final three-year, $60 million lease on Tuesday, which the A's also turned down. The mayor sent out the following statement Thursday. Oakland offered a deal that was fair to the A's and was fiscally responsible for our city. We wish the A's the best and will continue our conversations with them on facilitating the sale of their share of the Coliseum site. Oakland also wanted the MLB to grant exclusive rights to the city for one year to solicit owners and investors for an MLB expansion team. Fisher saying in part, we explored several options for a temporary home, including the Oakland Coliseum, even with the long-standing relationship and good intentions on all sides in the negotiations with Oakland, the conditions to achieve an agreement seemed out of reach. We understand the disappointment this news brings to our fans as this season marks our final one in Oakland. And let's play ball in the future here. Woo! Sutter Health Park, with its 14,000 seats, is significantly smaller than the 63,000 seats at the Coliseum. But the average A's game attendance is only about 10,000. Pitch in the air towards right field. Only 6,400 fans showed up to the Coliseum Wednesday night when the A's took a beating from the Red Sox, 1-0. The next home game is April 16th. But for now, it's Sacramento that's catching the attention. And we're looking forward to this being our home uh, until we move on to, uh, to our stadium in Las Vegas. The A's are set to move to Vegas in 2028 at the current site of the Tropicana. In Oakland, Joey Horta, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And of course, many Oakland A's fans say they are heartbroken, but not surprised to lose the team after 56 years in the Bay Area. I mean, what a loss. You know, what, what heartbreak it is to lose your professional sports teams that we've come together and rooted for. They say it's an especially hard blow after losing the Raiders also to Las Vegas. And of course, the Warriors jumped across the bay to San Francisco. But some hope the new teams, including the Roots, the Soul, and the Oakland Ballers, will find a following. This isn't the end of pro sports in the town. The roots are here, the soul are here, the spiders are here, and the ballers are here. And we're going to, you know, I think we're going to take the torch and begin a new chapter for sports in our game. Many fans say they'll continue protesting at home games this season where the A's are out of the gate on the early season at 1-6 and six to a nearly empty Coliseum. People who wanted to see the A's set up a temporary home at Salt Lake City are not giving up hope, though, that an MLB team will be uh, in their city someday. The Larry H. Miller Company pitched the idea of hosting the A's in Salt Lake City, hoping the arrangement would showcase the region's passion for the sport. 
The ultimate goal was to prove that Salt Lake City is the best place for the league's next expansion team. Larry H. Miller Company issued a written statement after today's announcement, and that reads in part, our proven and ready ownership group and broad-based coalition is fully committed to bringing an MLB expansion team to the power district on Salt Lake City's west side. We are grateful and encouraged that Utah was viewed as a potential host and solution for the athletics. A much different feeling among sports fans in Arizona tonight. Live look at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, which will host the NCAA Final Four games over this weekend. Fox 10's Lauren Clark reports an invasion of basketball fans is well underway. Well, the host committee is making sure fans are having a great time the moment that they arrive right here at Sky Harbor. And while the fun starts the moment they land in Phoenix and doesn't stop there with musical performances happening at Hans Park. With teams like NC State, Purdue, Alabama and Yukon finally here in town alongside their worldwide fans. Part of the NCAA, free basketballs? Would you like one? The party has started in Phoenix ahead of the final four weekend. It's much better than the 30 degree snow that I left this morning, so I'm super excited to, to have a good weekend here. Diehard Husky fan and alum Scott flew in this morning. Every March uh, gets pretty exciting up in Connecticut. It's one of the only sports that we have up there, no professional team, so we die for our, uh, for our Huskies and bleed blues. It's a once in a lifetime event for me. As Nancy Buss has already dunking in the merch for her giant Boiler family. Boiler maker for over 50 50 years, season basketball and football tickets for 50 years. <laughs> so big fan. And then there's these guys. College basketball, you guys are mad for over here, so we wanted to see what the environment was like. Who came into the desert from down under. Just kind of, we're basketball fans, so we here for the Final Four and went to the Phoenix game last night, and that was a little awesome, like, great bucket list for us from Australia. Across the town, the Valley is warming up for the weekend. Tents selling team t-shirts. Crew setting the stage at Hans Park for musical performances. Big hoops and floating basketballs decorating the Old Town waterfront and a giant bracket sitting outside the convention center. Just the excitement, especially this time of year, um, that, that all the young people get to experience. Um, you know, you can kind of, you get a big game, you can read it on their faces and in their actions. It's just, it's just fun to watch. Basketball coach Rusty Osborne visiting from Alaska says it's hard to have a foul thought when it comes to a tournament like this. Emotions come out when, when you watch college basketball at this level. First games will be on Saturday with the championship on Monday. All of the games will be played at State Farm Stadium in Glendale. Reporting in Phoenix, Lauren Clark, Fox 10 News. And look for extensive final four coverage at our website, westcoastwrap.com. Our online includes a look at the women's final four tickets, which are doubling the price of the men's games this year. On to weather now, new storms are crossing the west, bringing a mix of rain, hail and snow in California today. While it may be April, it certainly doesn't feel like spring with unseasonably cold temperatures all across the state. People in one Southern California neighborhood don't want to see any more rain. Hill already saturated from previous storms, giving way in Newport Beach today, destroying some backyards. Fox 11 Sal Eisner reports there may have been signs something was wrong days ago. How long have you lived here? Um, going on six years. Six years and Steve Peisner says nothing like this has ever happened to him. Friday he noticed the water level and his pool dropping. Now looking back, he says that's probably when the slide began. Looks like an earthquake hit it. Uh, yeah. The slide broke up his patio, backyard steps, and the backyards of two of his neighbors whose homes were also yellow tagged. All of this kind of like an elevator just sunk down about 10 feet. There's a history here of uh, unstable slopes. Newport Beach spokesman John Pope says sliding land has been a long time concern for many residents here. Fortunately with this slide the homes are still intact. Uh, there was a loss of the backyards um, which is very concerning. Uh, however the the residences themselves are still intact. Nonetheless. It's pretty uh, concerning. Alyssa Napuri works for Orange County Supervisor Katrina Foley. She came to offer help. The county assessor is able to reassess the property and see what happens. Uh, down the street at Galaxy Drive, there was something similar, and we were able to connect them with the county assessor so that they're not paying property taxes for land that's fallen into the bay. 
That was down the street on Galaxy Drive in March of 2023. In fact, it just so happened that Steve Peisner was there as a concerned neighbor that day a year ago as he watched the bulldozers tearing down homes of those who were affected then. I can't even imagine what a whole life of children, grandchildren, memories, and watching your home be torn down within an hour, just gone. Now, just a year later, it's the house he rents caught in a slide. At this point, it won't have to be torn down, but it is yellow tagged. It's the price of living in paradise. I guess so. That was Fox 11's Sal mm. Eisner reporting. People in that neighborhood understand they got more rain coming their way as well. And let's turn now to KTVU meteorologist Roberta Gonzalez, who's been keeping an eye on the West Coast. I know it was chilly in the Bay Area today, that's for sure. It certainly was, Frank. We didn't even make it out of the 50s in the Bay Area today, and all that cold weather's going to be filtering into Southern California. This is the system, not typical for this time of the year, for the fourth day of April, providing snowfall all in the mountain ranges in and around the Bay Area. Now the precipitation has now past the Santa Barbara area, making tracks towards the Los Angeles Basin and even moving towards the Mojave Desert. Today in Los Angeles, a high temperature 66, down from the average high 71 with the impending showers that have now moved into the area. Meanwhile, it was only 54 degrees in San Francisco when the average high is 64 degrees. It was raining in the Pacific Northwest. Check out Seattle with a high of only 48 degrees. You want some warm temperatures? How about that? Nearly 90 today in Phoenix, but the bottom is going to fall out for your weekend with the cooler air mass filtering in. So this is the system here. We've got a lot of activity going on behind it here. Just that shot of cool air moving into the Pacific Northwest. We do have rain and snow in throughout Idaho. And check this out. We don't have any snow at the Grapevine, but we certainly do at the Tehachapi Mountains as you're making treks towards Air For Edwards Air Force Base in the Mojave Desert. So here's the rain lurking offshore. We've got the snow in the interior mountain areas. And boy, the snow level dropped to 2,000 feet in throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. Now, it looks like the weather will remain unsettled for most of Northern California. While we will see the skies gradually begin to clear on the backside of this system to the north and then to the south, we still have a lingering shower in the forecast for the Los Angeles area, but still 80s in throughout Phoenix and into Tucson. Snow level for the Greater Lake Tahoe area. We do have a winter weather advisor in effect until 11 o'clock Friday night. So meanwhile, here's how we're playing it. Gradual clearing of the skies to the north and the Seattle area at 58 degrees. Smack in the middle in the Bay Area. San Francisco temperature still below average. Remaining a bit unsettled for the Giants home opener against the San Diego Padres. Los Angeles, you still have rain in the mix. Look at the temperatures taking a tumble in throughout Arizona and no snow, just sunshine in the Ma High City. Frank. Thank you, Roberta. It is one of the best heists in LA history. 30 million bucks in cash. More what appears to be a professional hit at a money storage facility. And I'll take a burger with a side order of a driverless car, please. Where restaurants are using Waymo cars for delivery when we come back. Stay right there. Welcome back to West Coast Wrap. $30 million in cash gone. Investigators say thieves stole the money from a storage facility in California. Fox 11's Susan Hurricino reports this has been called one of the biggest heists in L.A. history. From Sky Fox, a view of a plain warehouse. The only clue of what the warehouse might contain? The armored cars in the parking lot. This is Garda World, offering end-to-end -end worry free cash management, according to their website. But even this Garda World employee who did not want his face shown had no idea what was inside the building. I didn't even know there was $30 million, whatever the amount is in that building. Uh, it's just a shocker. $30 million cash stolen from this building Easter Sunday. LAPD and FBI are working together on the investigation and turned down our request for an interview. But there's been reports that the burglars dropped down into the building and cut their way out on the side. It, it actually sounds like a movie. Stacy Porter is retired Homeland Security. He now provides security assessments for businesses and airports. We have one time to get it right, but nothing is 100%. Porter and others wonder how the crooks could come and go undetected. Again, the anonymous Garda World employee. Just to think that 
they were able to go through the security system and get away with all that money, it's, uh, it's a shocker. Porter says businesses often neglect the vulnerability of the roof, but there should be plenty of security for the cash. Okay, I, I gain access into your facility from the rooftop. How was I able to access that vault with all that money? Did you know someone? Did someone on the inside know to give that uh, access code or that security code to someone to open it up? He's not the first to speculate the bad guys had someone on the inside. A place like this has uh, systems uh, that are very sophisticated to protect the facility, uh, whether there's, there's cameras galore, there's uh, very sensitive uh, alarms that pick up movement, sensors that pick up movement, anything like that. And, and to actually finally get to access to the safe, you, you need the access code, you need the passcode to get in there. Who's gonna know that? And that was Fox 11's Susan Harasuna reporting. Garda World has branches worldwide and over 132,000 employees. According to its website, its clients do include some Fortune 500 companies and government agencies. I got five. Go to Burger King. Five juveniles, young as 12, under arrest in connection with a pair of carjackings at King County, Washington. Police say the suspects tried to steal one man's car at gunpoint last night around 945. They escaped in a car they had carjacked earlier that day. That car crashed into another vehicle after running a red light during a police pursuit. Fortunately, nobody was injured. Alaska Airlines said today that Boeing has paid them an initial $160 million for the panel blown out back in January. The airline says it is still expecting additional compensation. The first payment covers the carrier's pre-tax loss related to the accident, such as lost revenue. Airline says its first quarter profits would have exceeded last year's number if that plug blowout didn't happen in the first place. Money also covers Alaska's cost of returning its Boeing MAX 9 fleet to service after grounding them for some three weeks. We are learning more today about a hot air balloon crash in Arizona that left four people dead. A newly released autopsy report says the pilot had high levels of ketamine in his system at the time of the crash. It's not clear whether that was a major factor in the crash. Four people were on board the balloon in January when it suddenly plummeted about 2,000 feet to the ground. An investigation on that crash is ongoing. Las Vegas Old Tropicana Casino will likely come down with an implosion. Documents obtained by Fox 5 show demolition crews have applied for an implosion dust control operating permit there. Fox 5's Joe Vigil explains it'll take a lot of planning to make it all happen. When the Riviera was imploded in 2016, one company that removed asbestos prior to it coming down was North Star Contracting Group. Company officials tell Fox 5 about 60 to 70 people went floor to floor removing asbestos in the drywall and ceiling. They sealed areas, soaked asbestos to prevent its spread, and removed it in about six months. Something similar will happen at the now closed Tropicana. The asbestos has to come out. And the only safe and secure way to, to get asbestos out is to do it before you disturb anything. Well, Fox 5 obtained this pre-demolition asbestos inspection report required by the county. Several pages indicate where asbestos was identified, including in walls and floors in many different areas. Here, restroom walls in the spa salon, spa fitness center, and locker rooms. Now, just because you're seeing it in different areas doesn't mean you were exposed to it. The CDC says asbestos poses little risk of exposure as long as it's intact and not disturbed. That's why permits and precautions are needed when a building is demolished. If asbestos is disturbed, tiny fibers in the air can be breathed in and get trapped in the lungs, which can later cause serious health problems. We appreciate your getting the word out. At the end of the day, we're going to make sure that this is not done in the dark of night. It'll be done uh, with incredible scrutiny uh, from county uh, trained county inspectors and administrators and the public will be made aware and in particular those neighbors in that area will all know what's going on and when it's going to happen. That was Fox 5's Joe Vigil reporting. The Tropicana officially closed its doors on Tuesday, marking 67 years 
on the Vegas Strip. Coming up, a new type of customer for driverless cars. When we come back, see how Uber Eats is teaming up with restaurants to deliver meals. And an unexpected twist in plans to help a threatened species of salmon. I'm going to show you why tens of thousands are now swimming in the wrong Oregon waterway. Coming up. Welcome back in Oregon. A tanker transporting 102,000 young Chinook salmon crashed in Union County, spilling thousands of fish into the wrong creek. This happened Friday near Looking Glass Creek. Oregon's Fish and Wildlife Department says the tanker was on its way to the Imnaha River, where the species of salmon is considered threatened. When it rolled on its side, taking a sharp turn, around 77,000 of the salmon being transported were dumped, killing an estimated 25,000 of them. Fish managers say the salmon that did survive will likely produce more salmon in that area instead of the Imnaha River. Uber Eats customers in Arizona might get a big surprise the next time they order a meal as the food delivery company expands its partnership with Waymo's driverless cars. Fox's Irene Schneider explains how this could change your delivery experience. Waymo cars are all over the valley, taking people around town without a driver. Starting today, you could also wind up having a Waymo bring you your food. I think a lot of people are used to seeing us drive around in Metro Phoenix in our 225 square, square mile area, but you still see people who are pointing and you know watching you go by. Waymo recently started partnering with Uber Eats to deliver food here in the valley. Right now, only a few restaurants are participating, but by next month, the plan is to deliver food from 10 restaurants mainly in the Tempe, Chandler, Gilbert, and Mesa areas. I think we've seen a lot of excitement since our launch with the mobility platform last year, and so um, we're excited to get consumers more food um, quickly and obviously help restaurants and merchants get their food quickly and efficiently to consumers. The way it'll work is you order on the Uber Eats app just like usual. If you select an order from a restaurant that's participating in the pilot uh, and you live in our service area, a autonomous vehicle option will pop up and say, hey, your delivery might be dropped off by a Waymo. You should still add a tip just in case you get matched with a human driver. But if you get matched with a Waymo, that tip charge will go away. This morning, a Waymo pulled up to the Princess Pita in Mesa. Employees brought out the order, put it in the trunk. As soon as the trunk closes, that's a signal to the Waymo that it's time to go. It's been a huge attraction. A lot of my customers will sit inside and watch in awe as it happens. And the customer will come to the car to pick up the food. It may be in the beginning stages now, but as the business continues to grow, the goal is to serve many more parts of the valley. Irene Snyder, Fox 10 News. It is a brave new world indeed. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on this Thursday. Of course, you can stay up to date on all of our stories we're covering online. Just go to westcoastwrap.com. Nice and easy and stream all of our shows on your smart TV by downloading the Fox local app. And that's a wrap here on West Coast Wrap. I'm Frank Malico. We leave you with a, a look at SFO where the fog and the wind are taking over. It's mighty chilly in the Bay Area. Have a great night, everybody.